thank you Holy Ghost Luke chapter number 18 Luke chapter number 18 from verse 1 this is what Jesus says I want to assure you in this realm you cannot survive without prayer in this realm you cannot survive without prayer the Bible says then he spoke a parable to them and to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart now before we even go to the parable these are very powerful word he never said angels he said men men the moment you became a man or entered the realm where men live you can't survive in this realm without prayer that is why when god wore the body of a man he could not survive without prayer let me show you a scripture go to john 18 john 18 john 18 when jesus has spoken this word he went out with his disciples over the brook drawn where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered look at two and judas who betrayed him also knew the place for jesus often met there with his disciples the place of his betrayal was the place of prayer so judas knew if i'm to get jesus i can only get him in a place where he used to retreat with us so Jesus being God when he took the nature of man he knew he cannot survive as man if he does not pray now he says men ought to pray now after he took the nature of a man he began to do what men ought to do now what does that begin to tell you he, he does not say men should he says men ought that is to tell me you are designed for prayer if this microphone does not amplify my sound there is a problem with this microphone why this microphone ought to amplify my the function of this among the many functions is to amplify my voice among the many functions of your life is to pray there is a software in man that needs to be activated by prayer otherwise you can never win in the terrain of humanity if you're not a man of prayer oh jesus the next thing i'm about to say might mess you up when god took the form of a man and entered eternity he still entered as a man and that is why the man Jesus up to now is an intercessor. Romans 8.34 Romans 8.34 Men ought to pray always and not to faint. Romans 8.34 Quickly. If you can read, let's read. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes what? The day Jesus took the form of a man, there was a software in that man that he ought to pray. Even now he's still praying. How much more should you pray? And that is why the disciples looked at the life of Jesus and they discovered they have not prayed. Tonight, I just want you to make a prayer and tell the Lord, release the grace for me to begin to enter new dimensions of prayer. Because in this realm, you cannot survive as a man if you're not a man of prayer. And God is not a respecter of men. God can ordain you for a great destiny, but that destiny will be aborted because you never prayed. And that is why sometimes it is not the language of ability, it is the language of availability ability who shall i send who is available to hear the sound that i need a man to send and that is why when a man rises in prayer that man has opened possibilities of realities upon his life spiritual dimensions supernatural encounters that possibility is opened open your mouth and begin to tell the lord lord may i never faint in prayer let the fire of prayer never leave my life if you sense that your prayer life was going down begin to tell the lord tonight 
reset my engine again tonight reignite my passion I am moving from one level of prayer I want to enter to dimensions where I can carry I am tired of just visiting I want to get to the level of carrying where I can stay for hours in your presence oh father Lord tonight release the grace release the ability we are defeated saints without prayer we can walk under revelation but without prayer oh God we have no effect on this terrestrial realm we declare tonight father whatever is in us let it begin to roll out of us shall flow the streams of life our mouth shall become like the pen of a ready writer ready to publish possibilities and realities in the realms of the spirit we declare our mouth shall be like the mouth of a king we shall declare verdicts and decrees that shall come to be established in the realm of the humanity tonight my father release a fresh grace let every altar that is full of ashes let there be a release of fire let the Levitical ordinance come upon your sons and daughters as the Bible says the Levites and the priests were ordained to make sure that the fire never went out of the altar let the altar in my heart let the fire never go out raise me O God with a priestly ordinance that I shall cut wood and add so that fire will never go out release the grace of labor release the dimension of an ox and the dimension of an eagle let it be upon us tonight let it be upon us tonight prayerlessness must come to an end every battle that I've lost because of my silence may I begin to win tonight every attack that came upon my life because of my silence may I begin to win tonight let the grace of prayer be released upon your life men ought to pray and not to faint whatever causes you to faint let it be lifted over your life whatever makes you feel like you want to abandon the place of prayer let it be lifted over your life i declare new dimension and new levels of prayer i declare intensity you are moving from one hour to two hours moving from two to three three to four four to five five to six six to seven some will begin to enter eight and nine and twelve hours of prayer let that burning begin to be upon you as it was upon John who was a man burning and lighting we declare an ignition in the realm of the spirit let my soul be set on fire let the altar of prayer be set on fire tonight Men ought to pray and not to faint. Le beles compelia sadaya. Re katosia paraskopaya. Zeliras compelia sabaya. Ah, somebody lift up your hands and say, Lord, I refuse to faint. Release your grace upon my life. Ah, release your grace upon my life. The grace of prayer. In this realm, you cannot survive without prayer. One writer wrote and said, when the weakest of saints goes down on his knees, the strongest of devils are afraid. Let's look at this scripture because Luke 1, 18 from verse 1. Now let's look at the parable that the master was giving. Hallelujah. We are going to look at two parables tonight. Tonight, my desire is that there will be a re-injection of prayer. I was studying the life of Paul and I discovered Paul never fasted but Paul lived a fasted life. That is a level. There are people who fast but there are people whose life is a fasting life. That they are not waiting for January to declare 40 days of fasting. As January comes, they are still fasting. That's a dimension, hallelujah. Whereby you, you tune your flesh to a level where it knows it can only take one meal. 
It's a discipline. They say Daniel. The first we know is the 21 days. But some, some writings say Daniel used to eat vegetables only in Babylon. And all the years he lived in Babylon, he was fasting. He never ate the delicacies. He survived on vegetables. Not for 21 days, the one we know. Do you know the Bible says, when the knees of Daniel met with the floor, he never left that place for 21 days. Until an angel showed up in the realm of the spirit and there was answer. It was not a 21 day fasting. It was a 21 day tarrying. The man knelt on Monday. He left that place after three weeks. That's what scripture say. That he never left that place until when an angel tapped him. No, those are dimensions. Moses entered a place, stayed for 40 days without food and water. They say you can stay for 40 days without food, but water no. But when he came glowing with the radiance of God, where he entered, he does not need to survive because of food and water. The glory is enough. There is a place you can enter. You are not adding weight. You are not losing. But you are living a fasted life. Because this, this body is now subjected to the spirit. That is what I desire for you. At that level, victory and miracles are a part of your life. Is someone hearing me? He said, then he spoke a parable. Now let's look at two. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now a parable is a story with a hidden meaning. So there was a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying get justice for me from my adversary. These were people troubling the widow. Now oh, there was a judge who never feared God, neither had regard for man. But there was a widow, a widow is a woman without a husband, who now needed justice from the man who never feared God. And an adversary is a perennial disturber. This is not someone who disturbs you once. This is a person who shows up every time. For. And he will not for a while but after what he said with himself though I do not fear God nor regard man yet because this widow troubles me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she will remain so the first thing we see was desperation for justice the second thing is that this woman knew there is no other place that I can get justice other than from the church. So she could not divert her cry to any other source. It was only one source. Yet because, now go to six. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge. Now you need to understand, God was now introducing a just judge. Okay, this has to sink. I know we have been taught this scripture from a place of don't give up in prayer continue pushing one day you'll get answer but the underlying revelation is not the continuous of prayer is the understanding of the judge you are approaching that's why he says an unjust judge gave justice to a woman, a widow. Now the church has only one husband because the church is a woman. And the husband is Jesus. And Jesus is also a judge. And now he begins now to bring the dimension of the judge we serve. And everybody read. That begins to tell you he might tarry but he is a just judge so when we are
approach God, we don't come like the widow. Because we are not widows. We are a church that has a husband. The second thing, it is not our disturbance of God that makes him answer. He answers because and shall God not avenge his own elect. We are his own. So he avenges because we belong to him. But he's attentive to our cry day and night. Meaning that in this system, it means that men are always in prayer and God is forever listening and he implements justice in the hour when it ought to be implemented. And then go to eight. I tell you that how? How? Uh -huh. Why? Because he's not an unjust judge. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he really find faith on the earth. So the challenge number one is that we have never known the judge we approach. That's the first challenge. Number two, we have not been desperate enough to know that there is only one man that can settle our matter. Number three, there is a challenge of faith believing that he's able to avenge speedily. And so the Lord is not defeated, but men are approaching God from a defeated quarter. And they think because things are not working here, also there, he could be very defeated. Someone was asking me, Pastor, what is happening? How comes people are now selling anointing oil and handkerchiefs and all that? I say this because people don't have faith in God. They must carry something. And, and so that because the faith is a currency things might happen not because of God but because they don't believe in God totally they believe that yes God can heal but anointing oil is more powerful oh Jesus I want us to enter a level of petition I don't know why you are gathered here tonight but I want you to approach the judge of all with the understanding that you are his elect. With the understanding that you are his bride. And I want you to begin to forward your cries. The Bible says be anxious of nothing. But with prayer and supplication. Make your request, your demands known unto God. With thanksgiving also. So at this level, I don't know why you are here tonight. But I believe you didn't come here tonight because there was just prayer. There are things you are believing God for. Hallelujah. I just presented to you a judge that answered speedily. There are matters that need divine intervention. There are things that need the verdict of Zion. There are matters that need the sword of judgment. There are altars that can only be judged by El Elyon. There are adversaries and men that have risen against our lives. We need to hand them unto the Lord. In the next few minutes, begin to fall your matters unto Zion. I don't know why you are gathered here tonight, but I believe their needs, their desires, their petitions, their matters, their verdicts that need to be overruled. The Bible says Esther prayed for three days and approached the king because there was a verdict upon Israel that all the Jews ought to be killed and only prayer could give her the capacity to approach another king. And the Bible says the scepter was stretched because the favor was upon the woman and at that hour another verdict was released the bible declares that the lord listens to our cry and sometimes he performs whatever we utter it is in the book of job that where the scripture declare that you shall decree a thing and it shall be established there are matters that need a change in your life there are circumstances that need a turn around there are doors that need to open tonight there are graces that must be availed tonight there are things that can only be sorted by the hand of the Lord. The Bible says on the hand of the Midianites was heavy upon the children of Israel that every time they are about to enter their harvest the Midianites showed up in their current, in their land and began to attack their harvest. I 
don't know which hand is upon your life every oppressive hand must be lifted tonight every power and every force of oppression must be lifted tonight upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus we know we serve a just judge there are matters there are battles that have been released our way accusations and slander tongues risen against our lives malice has risen the Bible says we have the power to judge and condemn every tongue raised against our lives and raised against our destiny and this night we neutralize every word every evil wicked word spoken against our lives against our business against our career against this ministry against our assignment right now we cancel them in the mighty name of Jesus may the Lord of justice begin to intervene over matters may the Lord of justice deal with our accusers may the Lord of justice stretch his sword over the altars of the wicked raise bring your matters unto the altars of Zion he is a just judge Kayamando lobo koto yabaya we are not a widow we are the bride of Christ our matters are being addressed speedily tonight files must be opened people that have released and used witchcraft powers against our lives tonight may the Lord of justice arise to judge every altar raised against the children of Zion may the Lord of justice arise to avenge and to deliver justice over the sons and daughters of Zion. Shamela Kompalia, Zekleperosi Kata, Zokamina Kataya, Zebreketosia, every snare of the fall, every attack, every trap set on the pathway of the righteous, let it be lifted tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare tonight there is divine intervention. The King of Glory, the one that sits on the throne of justice is dispensing justice tonight Mazoka Paya there is justice being dispensed and delivered upon the altars of the wicked upon the altars of the diviners witches and sorcerers satanists and freemason anyone that ever frustrated your life people that created roadblocks whatever they have elected and erected upon your destiny may the Lord of justice begin to move speedily Rakamandos Shatopia Kapa, so Compalia Sabela, Recandia Para, every spell, every attack, every malicious attack, Pali Katosa, Embelosa Diba Kataya, consultants of mediums, the star guessers, the wood, the moon worshippers, Rami Karusapa, so Kamia Kataya, so Kotalia, men that exchange the destinies of others, Laboria, Embredis Kapala. So Kontalia, Balosa Kipalataya, consultant of mediums, La Meraskopa, Isabia Kataya, Pam Readers, the star gazers, astrologers, diviners. Tonight, may the Lord of Justice arise in his justice. Let the sword of judgment be stretched over every quarter where attacks are coming from. Shamana Kompe, Ezabida Kata, Lopariya Kapa, attacks of our children attacks of our marriages attacks of our families tonight let the Lord of justice let him arise attack of our businesses attack of our ministries attack of our assignments tonight let the Lord of justice arise speedily to avenge for the church Sanos em Bracunta, Estanos Paria, Shambreke Toziba Kata, Lo Paria Kataya, where destinies have been tied, where lives have been bound. Oh Shapaya, every altar that bears your name tonight. Let the Lord of Justice, let the Lord of Justice, let the anointing that breaks the yoke begin to move now. Let the shackles of darkness, let the powers of the devil, let them begin to bow. Koraba Zekata, Lamina Comperia, Zakatoria Baranos. 
Zekla dosim braskepa Inkanta labra doskipala Shambre kentosia Rabela sopra kadela Impaka dosia Our children are successful Our businesses must prosper Whatever the Lord has ordained us to do No evil can arise against them Every wicked foundation We command it to scatter now Shamina kompeha Rekano sabriha What shall the righteous do When their foundations are attacked La mano sopra kata Every attack over my marriage Over my children Over my family Over this ministry May the Lord of justice The one that avenges for his own elect May the Lord arise May the Lord vindicate the righteous May the Lord arise Let the angels of our destinies be deployed Cabra dosa E cantoria paranos Escapalatoria E parascopa Shondambreketos Imparandos Emparia kataya Shatoria para We are calling upon the Lord of justice The Lord of justice The Lord of justice The King of justice May he arise tonight Speedily of our matters Speedily of your matters He is the Lord of Justice. He is the Lord of the Lord Lay your matters unto Him. He that watches over Israel, he neither sleeps nor slumbers. His eyes are moving to and from. He said, I have not seen a man that has created a hedge over Israel. I have not seen a man in the gap. As we pray, hedges are being erected. In our prayer, we are raising hedges, spiritual hedges, over what is connected to us. Shatala boko to yabaha, zelamina kompaliya sabela kataya. Mandele prede sekete lebo shialaba. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Oh, Jesus. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, vengeance is yours. Every attack over my life, over my family, over my children, over my career, over my destiny over my business tonight the Lord the source of justice speedily move over my matters in Jesus name may it be so over your life hallelujah he is a just God we just need to believe in him and know that he's, he is who he says he is. Because we know the power of the police, we don't have a problem reporting a matter to the police. And sometimes as we report these matters, we always leave that place confidently, knowing that it is in safe hands. Many of us have lost phones and you went to a police station and you never recovered but as you left that police station you felt like now even if someone stole my phone I'm now safe why because there is an understanding of the power that is in that house when we begin to have the understanding of the king that we call upon matters will begin to move speedily you will not worry because you know he's in charge he's in charge 
as you're praying I saw barriers being lifted I saw barriers being lifted because he says he shall avenge them speedily there was a speedily intervention over the lives of men monuments were falling things were being lifted foundations were being repaired whatever hindered your life it is lifted forever time to move forward has come and it is time to advance in the name of Jesus Luke chapter number 11 I discovered that you can pray as a ritual. Praying as a ritual is where you are raised in a family where people pray. You come to a church where people pray but you have no understanding of prayer. And the disciples came to a place and they discovered after the disciples of John went through a lecture on prayer, their lives began to change. And then they studied the life of Jesus and studied their prayer life. And they discovered we need to be taught. Look at this. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. There are levels of prayer and results you cannot access until you have understanding of prayer. There is a place where men are taught how. The Spirit will teach you what. The Bible says we do not know what we ought to pray. So the Spirit tells us what we. But before the Spirit tells you what you ought to, you must be taught how to. So that means you're moving from religious operation to intentional prayer. And John carried the lecture of prayer. And it looks the disciples of Jesus did not have the results of the disciples of John. So they realized this man after they were taught about prayer, their life began to change. So Lord, we are your disciple. And see, it is after observing how he prayed. Meaning that there are dimensions he touched. There are things he will do. Or maybe they had his utterance and they realized, guys, the way this man prays, he has a mastery of prayer. He needs to teach us. So he said to them, when you pray, not if, because you will pray. The word is when you pray. Tell your neighbor when you pray. Because the master expects you will pray. He says now, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The, the how there is you begin by worship and the how there is that you can never pray first of all if you're not qualified as a son the neighbor's children they don't call me dad they call me Baba Tiffany but because by salvation we became fathers it is the the spirit that cries Abba that will hallow his name. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed that Abba cry does not come from a spirit that is not regenerated. The Bible says there is a cry that says Abba, Abba. Your kingdom come. So we first of all deal with desires of him. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I have no time to teach and break down. Give us day by day our daily bread, both physical and spiritual. So you see, needs come after worship. You worship. You interact with the desires of the Father. Then you align with the will of the Father. Then now you can mention your needs. 
Now many have made prayer to be a place where they run when there is a crisis. So, they are, they are like a fire response system. The devil presses a red button, they run to prayer. And sometimes the devil what will do is that he will first of all kill your prayer life before he attacks you. So by the time you run to prayer, you have no virtue even to rebuke him. But when men stay in prayer, their spiritual antenna are very high. Bread is good, but his will and his kingdom are better. Look at four. And forgive us our why? For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to. The word there is anyone who sins against you. Now, you see, this lecture is very powerful because we have people who come to prayer and they are full of unforgiveness. Please, you are just speaking English. The only place where there is a condition is this. Forgive me because I have forgiven. So we don't forgive men because they deserve. We forgive men because there is a time we will need forgiveness. So forgiveness is like something you save. When you put an ATM in an account you've never put money, it will decline. So some of us, our forgiveness account are empty and God cannot forgive because this is a spiritual law that I forgive those who are forgiven. And the devil uses some of these laws to bind our prayer. I told you, there are people who don't have struggles of the flesh. They are not fornicating. They are not drinking. They are not smoking, but they are bitter. They are malicious. They are suffering unforgiveness. They have refused to let people go. And as they speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost is not there. They just have the language of the spirit, but they don't have the spirit that gave the language. And that is why church loses power in prayer because these are laws. Listen, we don't forgive because men never wronged us. You can bring a reason as to why you are bitter. But listen, you have also wronged men. And so the law says, if you need me to forgive, especially Pentecostals, we thought tongues is everything. And so we speak in tongues and, and we generate a feeling but no results. You know, during this election time, is when some people began to wrote and said, how can the church speak about this, about this man? Yes, he, 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 he was declared he lost the elections. But some of our pastors were so ruthless with their speech. And that's what the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth. So you can see we are, we are a bitter people. These are. That's why someone may not be as spiritual as you are. And I don't know how we measure spirituality. I don't know if there is a spiritometer that we say now you are 70 degrees hot Holy Ghost but you know we assume because you can speak in tongues you are spiritual but there are people who are not as spiritual as we look but they have results in prayer more than us why? because basic principles have been applied they will face you and tell you you wronged me I never felt okay and I just faced you to tell you that don't do it again and I forgive you. Some of us, we have to gossip that man with five people. So and so. Whatever he did to me, God forbid. Five. So you are, not only are you hurt, now you have entered slander and malice. You are intensifying your barrier of prayer. <laughs> oh, I know I'm preaching good. I refuse to gather here at midnight. Upig when I buried na own results. Yani wewe na mtu say yako kwa ba ati muko the same. 
it cannot be the same. That's why they say, teach us how to pray. I am now teaching you how to pray. And, and some of you must be very careful, especially intercessors. Because you can never pray to God with an offended spirit. There is a man of God I knew, a friend of mine, an intercessor. And one day I found him in the mountain and I was, he was praying, but I was praying for him. Because I was looking at my life and I was saying, Lord, I don't deserve to be where I am. This man deserves to be there. He's a better preacher than me. He prays, he's more serious with you than me. And I began to pray for him. Then the Lord opened my eyes in the spirit. And I saw the guy was given a green brand new V8. And after two months, it was no wheels, carelessly handled and all that. And I asked the Lord, what do you mean? He told me, every time this man comes to prayer, it's not because he loves me. It is because what wame mchokoza. So he comes to prayer so that I can anoint him so that they may know I have called him. And he said, I don't waste my anointing on personal grudges. So the, the motive of his prayer was not God. Fasting, praying, vibrating in tongues. But God is looking and saying, once you are done sweating, go and forgive. Then come and begin to pray. This is aerobics. And I tell you, some of us sweat, but no results. Why? Because simple instruction, go and forgive. And then now come and pray from a heart that is healed. May the Lord release your hearts. These are not midnight aerobics. This is a place where destinies must be changed. And I declare anyone that has been struggling with unforgiveness, may the grace of Zion come upon your life so that your prayers will not be hindered. They say, teach us how to pray. Let's finish this matter quickly. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you at midnight. We are at midnight. I said to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs now he's teaching them the language of prayer because men ought to pray always that is how you create persistence a man of God was in prayer complaining to God. The Lord took his life back 10 years and he opened a diary and he saw all the things he had written as prayer items and he had given God timelines. God had fulfilled all of them but he could not remember and the Lord began to remind him every time you are persistent in prayer i'm also persistent in my answers the problem is that i don't answer sometimes when you feel you need it but i'll answer it when sometimes you outgrow the desire sometimes when it is too urgent it can become an idol he is friend yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs now it's a parable so i said to you ask and it will be given to you. Now these are three levels. Now listen. If you don't know it is in existence, you cannot ask. I will repeat. If you don't know 
that there are things that our father has and they are ours and they exist for us you cannot ask now let me give a good example someone gives me your money and tells you by the way I have given Percy your money you will come to my office with confidence knowing that there is something you have that belongs to me and so in your asking you will not be beggarly the Bible does not say beg it says ask and it shall be so this is the dimension of knowing the promises of God of knowing the redemption rights as you got born again what came upon your life begin to place a demand I'll give a good example when you got born again as an individual one of your redemption rights is that curses cannot work against your life your brother who is not born again can be cursed but the day you got born again you received a power that neutralizes curses now you don't pray for deliverance you ask for the redemption right that the Lord has for you you don't begin to say Lord deliver me from the curses no 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 you begin to say Lord thank you and now I ask for freedom from any curse that is in my family teach us how to pray seek seeking has the language of kutafuta if I close the lights in this room and I say in this room in one of the corners there is 10,000 I tell you you'll begin to seek so all these things are connected to revelation so there are things we ask for there are things we seek or look for and there are doors we knock so the reality here is you cannot seek what you are supposed to ask neither can you ask what you are supposed to seek neither can you knock in a place where you are supposed to ask all this is pegged on revelation there are doors in your life you have never knocked because you never knew they are in existence may the Lord open your eyes tonight to understand doors that you need to knock tonight to understand things that you need to begin to look for and tonight to understand things that you need to ask for and then as we begin to conclude he gives us the nature of the father look at 10 for everyone who asks receives now you begin now to see the variation who seeks finds and who knocks it is opened so there are things that need a knocking prayer there are matters that need a seeking prayer and there are matters that need an asking prayer now if you are not taught you might knock where you need to ask you are in prayer and you might be asking where you need to knock and then look at 11 then he says if a son asks for bread from any father among you will he give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will he give him a serpent instead of a fish or if he asks for an egg will he offer him a scorpion you know I'm a father and I know we don't do that if you then be evil <laughs> now the Lord is saying even these men they are evil but whatever their sons ask for they have to deliver know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit so for the Holy Ghost, you don't seek, you ask.
it's a gift someone asked me pastor how do i speak in tongues i said ask because dance is a gift what happens with gifts you ask the owner to give you and it is the owner who will interrogate whether to give you or first of all to tell you what the gift is all about so that you don't abuse the gift hallelujah so personally i believe the reason why this scripture is here is because once you have the holy ghost he will lead you to know even what to seek he will guide you to know even what to knock and that's why the holy ghost becomes very key and instrumental oh jesus the bible says Haggai placed Ishmael on a rock and abandoned Ishmael and she went a distance of an arrow throw and she sat down so that she could not see the death of her child and the Bible says Ishmael began to cry and the cry of Ishmael arrived in heaven because Ishmael was a seed of Abraham and Abraham had a covenant with God that I will bless your seed. So whatever Abraham gave birth to carried the covenant of blessing. And whatever cried was not Ishmael, it was the covenant. And the Bible says the eyes of Haggai were opened and she saw water. Could it be you are in the place of despair and all you need is a covenant cry tonight for your eyes to be open, to begin to see the things you need in your life. We are praying from the covenant of Calvary and we are telling the Lord, open our eyes to know what to ask, what to seek and the doors to knock. Make that prayer in just a few minutes because some of us, our prayer life is about to change. There are doors you have been knocking but you never knew that you don't even need to knock them. There are things you have never asked. There are things that are supposed to be in your custody but because of the absence of revelation you have never had access to them. They are matters that you need to begin to search. The Bible says it is the joy of a king to hide a matter but it is also the joy of princes and kings to reveal and also decode what the king has hidden. There are things we need to find and search. There is a labor in searching. There are mysteries and realities we need to enter into but the Lord must release the grace tonight so that we can begin to search. There are dimensions we cannot enter until we begin to search the scriptures begin to search ah, the realm of the spirit begin to search dimensions kapa so kamina kataya there are things that need to open up there are doors that need to be knocked nobody has ever knocked those doors in your family may the lord bring revelation as the eyes of Haggai were open because a cry was released from covenant tonight you are standing on the covenant of Ella Leon, the covenant of Calvary. Let your eyes be open. Kayabashe talaba. Ze kamano zabria kataya. Ze lamina kompelia sabela. Zako palaro samina. Rakande predia sabaya. Zoko toya palia. Shande le predescapa. Zako paliras kompeletos. Open our eyes, O oh God. Let the eyes of our spirits be opened. As you open the eyes of Haggai. Some of us are in the place of despair. But when their eyes are open, they begin to see. They begin to see. Open our eyes, O oh Father. May the Lord open your eyes. Hallelujah. There are a few things. Tonight I just came to teach emphasis and to place emphasis on teachers how to pray. Hallelujah. There are a few things that prayer. I will not mention all of them but just a few. 
Prayer is the agent of change. Prayer will change a carnal man to a spiritual man. Prayer will change a weak saint and make them a strong saint. Luke 9.29 the Bible says when Jesus prayed, his countenance changed. Luke 9.29 Isaiah 40.31 Them that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings. That scripture begins by saying, have you never heard, have you never read? That the Lord neither gets weary. As you pray and as you get this grace of prayer, May there be change of your life and may there be a release of supernatural strength over your life in the name of Jesus. Prayer is the activator of divine intervention and supernatural encounters. Exodus 17 is 11. Prayer is the activator of divine interventions and supernatural encounters. If you want to live a life of the supernatural, begin to love prayer. Divine power is exported through the channel of prayer. And so it was when Moses held his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. The posture of your hands dictates the level of victory. The day your hands began to go down, the levels of the waters began to increase. But the day your hands went up, the levels went down. The enemy comes in like a flood. But what the Lord does, he raises a standard. So if the flood is 10 meters, the Lord raises you to 20 meters. And that raising comes when your hands are lifted. Hallelujah. You know, this is not a service, it's a prayer meeting. Prayer is the channel of decree and divine legislation. Look at Numbers 14.28. Prayer is the channel of decree and divine legislation. As we speak, some of us, because of your rank in the spirit, your words are low. They are not grammar. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. So there are things we speak to his hearing and provokes the actions of Zion. Job 22-28 You shall decree a thing and it shall be. Finally, prayer is the weapon and channel of our warfare. Ephesians 6-18 This one you have to read. Prayer is the weapon and channel of our warfare. Now, begin from 17 because we always read the armor of God and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Aha! Uh -huh. Pray with an armor without prayer. Is a designer cloth. Whatever gives power to your armory is praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and pers supplication for all the saints many times we don't read that part helmet of salvation breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth the sword of the word of god the the sandals of the gospel i tell you all those things are good but they cannot stay with you if you don't pray. And this scripture begins with, we do not wrestle, it begins from 610. 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and all these things. And then now it says, now wear the full armor. Whatever wraps up that armor is all prayer. That is what strengthens the helmet of salvation. Whatever will strengthen the breastplate of righteousness is all prayer. Whatever will strengthen your truth is all prayer. Whatever will strengthen your sword is all prayer. The shield is all prayer. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, usher me to the dimension of all prayer. In the name of Jesus, from today, my words shall be low in the realms of the spirit. From today, I am receiving strength in prayer. My words are legislations in the realm of the spirit. From today, oh God, I declare my full armor is strengthened by all prayer and I am winning in every spiritual battle in Jesus name. We bless the Lord for peace in the country. And we declare even as they go to the judiciary, we announce he that sits on the throne of righteousness and justice shall be in the courtroom to take charge of the mouth of the judges. And we announce as we have seen peace prevail, we announce there will be no hijacking. May justice prevail. May justice prevail. And may this be the final case. Whoever loses, may they accept. And whoever wins, may the grace of God be upon them. So that the nation can move forward. And we want to announce, as the peace has prevailed, we are not expecting any chaos. If there be anyone, any meeting or gathering, planning for chaos, disruption, for personal gains. May their meetings be scattered. May their conversations be confused. And may their agenda be revealed and exposed in the name of Jesus. We declare peace in Kisumu. We declare peace in Nairobi. We declare peace in Kakamega. We declare peace in Central. We declare peace in the Mombasa region. All the 47 counties of Kenya let the peace that has prevailed let it continue to prevail in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah the Lord will fight for this nation and will see the Lord in the land of the living and we also declare next week from Wednesday Thursday and Friday as we go to Kasarani for the conference, the Rema festival, we announce that Jesus will be lifted. Even as Apostle Joshua Selman comes, Apostle Kemani, Bishop J.B. Masinde, Reverend Kula, Pastor Tim Wangi, Lord, set a platform where you shall be lifted. Set a platform where your name will be lifted and set a platform where you will be glorified let your will prevail let it not be about any man but let the attention be shifted unto you jesus the king of glory gather men and let an apostolic sound be launched in the territories of nairobi and kenya lord we covet your strength and your wisdom I decrease, Lord, that you may increase. We pray for that meeting and we declare there will be divine intervention. But above all, whatever Zion has ordained to happen will happen. We pray for every minister. We pray for every activity. Lord, take center stage. Let men not remember someone, but let them remember Jesus. In Jesus name we have prayed. I covet your prayers. Hallelujah. I was just praying and I felt that is not just a platform. That's a meeting that is going to 
shift something in the spirit. This is the funniest thing and I'm saying this very sensitive. There are people that turn church meetings to be businesses. There are people when they hear you are calling an international preacher, they call you and they tell you we can mobilize men for you. So they have strategies of mobilizing men. But I was surprised in this meeting, God is mobilizing for himself. And this is the mystery. It is our generation because there is a hunger and there is something we are looking for. There are people who turn Uhuru Park meetings to be business. Where you hear there is a preacher from America and he finances the whole meeting and you have to import people. So some of the people even in that meeting, their work is to say amen because they are paid. We are not politicians. And that system is ending with our generation. That God will begin to gather men for his own meetings where his name is lifted and there will be such a hunger that they mobilize us. Those who run mobilizing ministry, their wells are dry because angels of harvest will gather men where there is fresh carcass. And may it begin with this meeting. May the Lord gather for himself a people that are going to be launched as territorial armies for territories. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hand. Father, I bless everyone that has joined us in this prayer. And I declare tears have been wiped away. The sick have been healed. Doors have been opened. And whatever is beyond man, Lord, you have already showed up in their lives. Testimonies shall be on their lips because no one ever cried unto you and remained the same. I thank you even for the online church that you keep on growing every day. Thank you for them that are watching us globally. We thank you for this platform that we can reach the globe with your name, Jesus. Be lifted, be glorified. And even those who are online, I bless them with the blessings of Zion. Whatever made you gather and assemble tonight, may you receive it in Jesus' name. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Just turn to somebody, tell the men ought to pray. And tell that neighbor, teach us how to pray. Amen. It's time to give and our giving details are already there. The m person number 817370. And if you're giving through m pesa 0726714713. If it's wave and you're looking for a name, the name is Anthony Kahora Mwangi. Those are my names, by the way. So the money is safe. Hallelujah. Amen. So you guys, those who want to continue in prayer, you can continue. Uh, otherwise, we meet on Sunday. As I'll be teaching about how to baptize nations in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now you'll stop baptizing men like that and begin to baptize nations. Selah.